All right, we are live. Let's test and make sure we're good. Uh, nothing has come out yet. It's getting there. All right, we are here. So, uh, <laughs> pretty interesting show. Uh, and Ken said we have to look a little professional for this show. So make sure we're we're dressed up a little bit nicer. I don't think I can wear these glasses though. I can barely even see like my eyes in here because like the glare is like all random, but. Ken, what's up? What's up, man? I gotta look professional. Uh, man, I'm loving our topics lately. So, you know, uh, even though Glenn doesn't send it to me five minutes before the show, uh, I'm still excited. So uh, I told him today that let's put some uh, button up shirt and uh, let's get down to all this serious stocks and, uh, <laughs> you know, talk about uh, our, our topic for today and help a lot of people uh, get to where they want to be. Uh, in life, in their finances, and in their goals. Yes, sir. Very nice. First, let's do a couple of shout outs before we start. So this this live show kind of goes back to what we did a couple of weeks ago. It was top 10 do's and don'ts of successful people. And we had a pretty good response from it. So now we're going to do kind of the same thing. I mean, it's from like this article that um, I did read that a top 10, totally different topic, though but i really wanted to talk with ken about it and also to relate to everybody that wants to become a full-time reseller i know it's tough and if you're in a position like we were in a job career you just did not want to be in it's tough to go in day in and day out and that's really want to talk about this um live show so it's gonna be a little bit different but if you're working on stuff and you just want to listen i think that's probably the best <laughs> the best bet but uh, I think it's going to be a really good episode. We're also going to talk. We're also going to talk to, or got, I guess talk with Ken to first see like where we started in our jobs and career part, and then get into the list. But um, top chat, who's here? Eric Rosner, what's up? District deals in the house. Caroline, Ecom Moose, uh, Zach's here. Junior's here. Will, what's up? Uh, Chris, let's see. It's me. Josie's here. Hey, what's up? uh jim uh let's see cisco's here glitter and associates here uh you guys are so dressy i thought i was watching the wrong channel oh well <laughs> you might as well get used to it we're just gonna get more serious and get dressier <laughs> matter of fact i'm not even wearing any pants i'm barely Let's even wearing underwear that. under this <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, let me see. Robert says, what's up? New Burlington and coming to Far East El Paso. I didn't know that, but now I'm going to look into it. Now I'm going to do as much research as possible. Braulio, what's up? I got to text you and see how you're doing. Uh, Victor, listening while running on the treadmill. There we go. You can do that. Let me see. Uh, ben, what's up? We said Robert. Kevin, what's up? He's here too. Uh, Aaron, Dallas in the house. Marco's here. What's up? All right, so more people coming in, and that's going to happen. So let's start off with, you know what? I need to take these glasses off. I, I can't do this. All right. Matter of fact, I'm just going to rip this shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Panda Rose says, love the hair. Thanks. Let's get in there. It's a little messy today. Uh, Callie Fines, what's up? Flipping Cheddar in the house is also here. So can tell them first where you were, where you used to work. Mm -hmm. and career-wise, and then you jumped, obviously, into the full-time reseller part. But tell them where you used to work, and then go from there. Sure, sure. So uh, I moved here, in this, um, I moved to the U.S. from the Philippines about five years ago. Uh, so as soon as I got uh, all my immigration stuff ready and I could work and everything like that, I actually applied at a call center uh, agency. And uh, so I actually was the bottom line, uh, you know, the, the bottom of all. So I was in the phones. I was a call center representative. So um, I worked for a company that sold direct TV. So I, I did that and um, I did it for, for about, uh, well, I could say that was my first job ever in my life, my first formal job, because it was, you know, either I was working with my dad for my dad or, you know, some relatives and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I really didn't know uh, a lot about, you know, working for a corporation. So that's why I wanted to try it and stuff like that. So I did that. I mean, I just, 
I could say I YouTubed everything. You know, I didn't know uh, how to become a good call center agent and everything like that. We only had a two week training. After that, we had a two week kind of like a trial period. And if you pass, you move on. If you don't, you know, sorry, <laughs> better luck next time, you know. So I did that. Um, so I went there uh, to become an assistant supervisor and then became a supervisor and a sales trainer. So uh, that's my background uh, until um, until I kind of hit the glass ceiling. And basically, uh, you know, uh, my bosses, the boss on top of me were basically saying, like, you're moving too fast. Uh, slow down. Uh, there's a lot more people senior than you. So um, that was kind of hard to hear. But I think it was good to hear that, that knowing that I didn't have anywhere to go uh, further in that career that I thought I was going to like. And after that, I pretty much tried to open up a startup company. It didn't do so well. Uh, I partnered up with somebody. It didn't do well. Uh, after that, I had to, you know, pick up the slack, you know, uh, money's running out and I drove for Uber uh, for about two months. And then I looked into uh, flipping stuff online because I'm a sneakerhead. I bought and sold items online and then I realized that hmm, maybe this could be something. And then saw Gary V's 27 flip challenge went to youtube and saw a lot of the uh you know uh resellers that were on youtube and landed on hustler hacks youtube channel and then uh after that uh the rest was history man uh i just pretty much watch all his videos and just absorb uh everything that i could learn and pretty much applied applied i emailed glenn uh i mean actually a couple times and we emailed back and forth and you know we skyped together and that kind of was just like a breakthrough moment for me that man this guy's done it for uh, a few years now uh made real good money paid off his student loan uh why can't i do it too so that's where where we are right, right now uh doing full-time ebay me and my wife now so my wife's not doing full-time with ebay as well you landed on hustler hacks youtube channel and you never win on anybody else's channel that's what i like to yeah. hear can land it on Hustler Hacks. He's like, you know what? I just believe in this channel. Who cares about all the other channels? Oh, for Where real, you man. You know, for real. I didn't want to. I didn't want to sell no dookie ass stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's uh, Ken's story as far as in the call center, and we're gonna go back and forth. That's what I like about this article thing, because we're gonna go back and forth between um, our experiences, and his was different than mine because. Um, I had student loans, so I graduated from college and as a graphic designer was my main uh, degree and everything. So um, I got a job there at the university as a graphic designer, started from the bottom and I just uh, had to do like a lot of catalogs, school catalogs, like full books uh, type of thing and flyers, logos, things like that. Um, and I'd worked there part time for like three years. And then now I had full time, I had like three years under my belt. But during that whole time, I had student loans and of course, car payment, credit cards, which books, some books I didn't even open in, in class. One book, Geology, hmm. 250 bucks for this book, brand new, never opened it. <laughs> and then at the very end of the class, I was like trying to get rid of it. And they're like, Sorry, sir. This is the old edition. Oh, we can't take this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, screw college. Man, that's why you should have uh, you should have learned it from me. Um, I actually <laughs> took my <laughs> so my parents gave me money. So I didn't have any student loans. They gave me money for stuff. Give me money for books instead of spending it for books. I actually paid for a photocopy of the book. <laughs> It was like a fourth of the price, and I end up not using it still. <laughs> yeah, you're one of those hustlers out there with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, books out there. Um, let me see, man. For some reason, I don't know why I have to keep banning people, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, girl on fire, what's up? Let me see. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the story. So I worked full time there. I had to. Uh, pay off the loans, had a lot of stuff to do. But during that time, I started to resell and go to garage sales and do all that during the weekends. And then 
Um, I started reselling on eBay. So at the part I knew it was time to leave, which that was my main goal. I did get tired of it. There's a lot of politics that came into the whole thing. And with politics, it's like, I didn't feel like I had that fair shot that other people were getting because I didn't kiss ass to the boss. I didn't know anybody else that was higher up that uh, would hook me up with a better job. Um, I didn't know any of that stuff. So I just kind of came in, wanted to do graphic design things. And then I was just like, just there, there, there. Why I saw other people, you know, getting more money or getting uh, better positions and moving up because they knew certain people and they knew how to not necessarily work their way up. They just had the hookup to get to that point. So I was like, man, it's not really something I want to do. And I've been stuck here, you know, in the office for a while. And the reselling thing was doing good. So then I made sure I was ready to go by full time by having the student loans paid for. And then uh, my other loans were coming down. Like I, that was like goal number one, get these loans down and then I could move on from there. But that, and then of course my expenses trying to get that down too and not buying just dumb stuff. Um, so all this really helped me and then transition. I was like, you know what? It's time to quit. I can do this. And then now my sales are going up. I have a better system in place to make sure my sales are consistent. So all these things into place. So we're going to talk, talk about all that and how it fits in to today's topic. Top 10 lies you should stop telling yourself about your job slash career. So number 10. Uh, here's the, So all of them are kind of quotes, of course, that everyone's okay. telling. But number 10, um, I don't know how to do anything else. Hmm. So this is a common this is a common lie people tell themselves. What it really means is I'm not willing to get out of my comfort zone and learn new skills. Even if you feel as though you have no other marketable skills, you certainly do. And these can all be uh, honed in by a little education. So usually when I hear like someone says, I don't know how to do anything else, mm -hmm. usually kind of came from some of like the older crowd that I kind of worked with, like I've been here forever. I don't know how to do anything else. Right. And that's where I would hear it the most from. Mm -hmm. But what's kind of cool though now is like, I get a lot of emails from people that are definitely over 50, 60, even 70. I have one guy that was over 70. I think that he's like reselling and doing all that. So it's not like you can't learn right, a new right. skill. I just think kind of like what they're saying here, mm -hmm. you're just not willing to get out of that comfort zone. I mean, I hundred percent agree. Uh, I think I think it starts. Uh, it's, it really starts there when you what you tell yourself, right? Uh, if you tell yourself, and if you actually say it, you know, like I can't do it. It's either you have a close mindset or you are lazy. Um, because to be really, you know, to be successful, uh, you have to learn a lot of things. There's no one thing. Um, even let's just say you're in a profession, right? Um, you have you have a associate's degree, you have a bachelor's degree, you have a master's degree, and you have a doctorate degree, right? Just looking at it at the financial level, somebody that has learned more, that has a PhD, technically makes more. Why? Because they have learned more and they have put in more effort. So just at that financial and education mindset or or frame you already can tell there that you have to do more you have to learn more to actually become more or make more so and man i i, I think the biggest thing that um i actually love about the journey of reselling is learning the learning not getting it right right off the bat but learning and being okay with making mistakes that's the biggest thing yeah because you're gonna make mistakes regardless um whatever you're trying to learn you're gonna make mistakes and i could just know what to do from the very beginning mm -hmm. um like caroline said here um didn't know how to do ebay it took me a year to learn um we learn every day something new on ebay gotta keep learning so that's exactly everybody that watches the channel too that at least i'm getting emails from that have never tried ebay before start off slow i always recommend 
the selling the things that you already have in your own house. I mean, you're not going to just jump in mm -hmm. and spending a bunch of money on shoes, especially mm -hmm. if you don't have the capital. I mean, there's no need to do that. And you're just going to end up really making big mistakes. You're going to get discouraged and not want to sell. Right. Of course, you have to start off, you know, with the things you already have, you want to get rid of and then build that up. What's up, drummer? Drummer in the house. Um, but going back to kind of like, I don't know how to do anything else. Um, and some of the older crowd, I guess it kind of reminds me of also, you've probably seen it all the time too, is like, well, after you retire and you're like, you know, they say, always say when you're like, you know, 60 or something, you can go buy your dream car mm -hmm. and like do all that. And they'll show like a guy like on a commercial, he's like older. He's, mm -hmm. he's like a silver Fox. He looks cool. Mm -hmm. And then he's driving like, you know, a Corvette or other cars. Mm -hmm. And then like, but when I see it, like if you're older too, I'd rather be in a position to where I'm not, I mean, if you're going to buy a car like that, more than likely you're still somewhat working and you're yeah. now you have to work to pay that car off and other things that, you probably don't really, really need to begin with. So you're, you're just continually adding on more mm. bills and getting there, even when you're older. Cause I see people that are like, man, I want to retire and rest, but I can't cause I have to keep working. Well, why do you have to keep working? Because you have all these other things that you do have to pay for. Medical stuff is different. Things right. happen, but things that you don't need like flashy cars or like a big house and other stuff. I mean, there's not really no really point in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent agree with that. I mean, I, I I could talk on this topic for the next hour. <laughs> I know we had nine more to go. Oh yeah, but, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> but for real, uh, just learning. You have to. You have to. I mean, when somebody tells me like eBay so hard, and you know, or something, right? It's so hard. I don't know how to do it. I just tell them, it took me months to learn. I mean, maybe a, a, more than a week to learn. I mean, let's just say this. It took me about two to between, it took a normal human being two to three years before it can it can walk or run. Yeah. Now, sure. now, just on the physical side, right? Let's just say you never had the the desire to walk. All of us would be crawling right now. <laughs> you know so it, it takes process and you have to learn and you have to talk you have to learn how to talk you have to learn how to eat solid food life is all about learning life is all about learning something new and improving and growing and when you get to a point that you think you're not learning life or you don't want to learn anymore then life becomes boring yeah it gets kind of just stuck in the same thing over and over District deals. I love when people tell me eBay is intimidating. Just one less reseller to worry about. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, Ashwell, how many years did doctors have to go to school? They aren't trying to find the quickest way to be a doctor. 100%. That's true. I mean, like, you wouldn't want a doctor to be operating on you. And <laughs> He's like, I've only been doing this for a couple of months, so. Huh? I've only been doing this for a couple of months, so like <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly. That's why they get the big bucks, like a pilot, right? Good morning, everybody. Fasten your suit belt. Uh, maybe we'll get to our destination in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like things like this. Literally, for us, you know, in the in the no normal world or natural world. You want the pilot to have the most hours under his belt and the most experience under his belt. Now, why do we think that things come that easy and come that fast? <laughs> it's weird. We want, we, want, we want the pilot to have all the hours to learn, but we want our lives to be automatically successful in two years. I mean, you can do it. It's not impossible, but two years is not tomorrow. Very true. Um, I forgot we still have nine more of these. Let's get a number. <laughs> number nine <laughs> is uh, <laughs> I put too much time into my career. So unless you are at risk of losing stock options or a significant pension, the time you spent your career should not be a limiting factor in leaving for a new path. Uh, and this I, I do agree because that was also, I guess, some of the other older crowd sayings was like man i've been here for 
10 years, 12 years. Like, I can't just leave now. But like where they're saying, like, these people don't have like a 401k. Technically, like, what's really keeping you here besides yeah. the fact that you're comfortable? Mm -hmm. uh, nothing really is kind of holding you down. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a safe zone mentality, you know. Uh, I'm safe here. I know everybody around me. Uh, I know my boss. I know what not to say, not to get fired. I know what to do <laughs> to not get fired. I know, you know. I know all my coworkers and stuff like that. Man, change 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 is not easy. But if you're trying to go after something that you don't have right now, you should be able to make that sacrifice. That's not going to be easy. Man, when we started reselling, I didn't know anybody. My Hustle B account didn't have my face on it because I was afraid. I didn't know who was who, right? And I was just, man, I'm going to just put it out there. I'm just going to document my journey and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, I put myself out there. You know, uh, Glenn was coming to Chicago. A few of the other resellers coming to Chicago. I went out there and met all of them. And that was putting myself out there. That wasn't easy. So, so again, if you stay in your comfort zone, do not expect something to happen out of the blue. Or, you know, miraculously, you become an eBay guru and you still have your full-time job or still do the same thing over and over again. You know, that's what Einstein said. Insanity is expecting different results and doing the same thing over and over again. Yes, sir. And uh, Scott Motion, I have no coworkers, which, <laughs> yes, now it's completely different. Austin, gentlemen, what's up? Um, and I guess with the, uh, with the, oh, Ross employees are coworkers. That's from Caroline. Um, Blee, so Blee's D's another guy. Come on, I, like, we really have to get more bands? We have three, we had two already. We're, we're running records here. We're breaking records. <laughs> Some of these haters. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the house. They're they're going. They're running wild. Um. All right. Let's go to number eight because we have to keep going. But number eight. Uh, I'm too old to start a new career. Now this one I think was kind of like all the other. I think the other mm -hmm. three. Like it just gets to a certain point. I think they're kind of going over and over again. I think some of the other ones are a little bit better. But this one, I'm too old to start a new career. We know that one's a lie. We just talked about how some of the older. Um, at least some of the people that have emailed me that are older that like, remember I told you that one guy that was like 70 plus, like, mm -hmm. um, and he was like learning the reselling thing. He was trying to mix in some of the raw stuff, which, uh, with his like thrifting stuff. So, um, yeah, never too old there. Um, number seven, I'm not too unhappy. <laughs> this is kind of weird that's, because that's true. That's true. Um, like, okay right i mean man one, the one word that that i think everybody should be scared of is the word okay i'm just okay everything's okay because <laughs> i feel like if it's not great and if it's not bad i think the okay zone is the complacent zone and it's the scary zone for me because that means you're not trying to reach for something more and there's not enough pain for you to reach something more, right? The fact that um, I had to scrap around and Uber around to make ends meet, my, my finances wasn't okay. It was bad. Yeah. So I'd rather be in a bad situation rather than an okay situation because great situation means you've done something to accomplish it bad situation will push you to do something better so the okay situation for me is the complacent situation is the not unhappy not happy you know it's just like in the middle like i'd rather have ice cream or hot coffee <laughs> <laughs> i'd rather have an iced coffee a hot coffee no like middle lukewarm coffee nobody wants that <laughs> well their example is like millions of people tell themselves that well everyone hates their jobs 
<laughs> or there are worse careers. Right, right, right. And this almost kind of makes me um, go back to where, like, so, like, my mom used to tell me a lot, you should be grateful that you have this job. Mm -hmm. And yes and no, because I'm like, Yes, because I know there's people out there that want, you know, like a full time job or similar job in the graphic design field that I was in. Mm -hmm. But then also it's like, not really, because I'm not even liking what I'm doing. And I'm just here because I need to collect this check because I have so much debt mm -hmm. and all of this. I'm just kind of like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a weird you know, like a weird statement. But here it's like everyone hates their jobs. It's almost like when you go to like a party or family get togethers or things like that, you see people, it's like, hey, what's going on? Like, eh, same old. Mm -hmm. eh, just work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, that, I, I think that's a mentality that everybody kind of like shoves through, through us or that mentality that people pushes on us that it's okay to have to not like your job, but you're making good money. It's okay to to not like your job, but you're able to pay the bills. Um, I, I think we hear that a lot because a lot of times all these expectations are put on us, right? Like, um, for example, uh, you know, why, why, why do we want to be a nurse or an engineer or a lawyer? A lot of times, if if there's no other good reason for it, it's because of financial benefit, right? Because they make the big bucks, yeah. right? But unless you really love to become a nurse because you really want to help people on the hospital, I think it's just because of the financial gain. And we know that having all the money isn't the answer. It's, it's, it's missing the other piece. Yes, it's okay to be financially financially be taken care of, but the biggest part of life is really to have that self fulfillment, being happy in what you do every day. Now, I always question myself every time I wake up uh, at noon. <laughs> every time I wake up at noon, <laughs> am I excited to go about with my day today? Am I excited with what I'm gonna do today? So you know, today I woke up, I was excited. I told my brother, my family is here. Let's go outsourcing. So we went outsourcing from 9 a.m. this morning until until about 6:15 this after this tonight. So I loved it. You know, I'm not I'm not tired. I'm excited. You know, I took a shower. I'm excited for this thing. I I, I just that's one thing that maybe why I do this or why I do my Instagram account because I want people to know that it's possible. It's possible to love what you do every day. Yes, sir. And I think um, that one kind of leads into well, actually this one's totally different it actually leads into the next one. But um, number six, which is a good one. My company needs me too much. <laughs> and this one is hilarious because I actually. I think everyone at some point probably feels this way that like, man, when I'm gone, let's see if they could even do this stuff without me. Because, like, people at some point think that there's some type of all-star at wherever they work. Um, but the reality is you're a spoke on the wheel, and the wheel's going to keep turning whether you're there or not. All they're going to do is hire somebody else and plug them in. Now, whether that person does the job good or not, who knows, but they'll definitely find a replacement for you. And like, that's not going to be too difficult. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just plug somebody else in there. Yeah. But... Uh, I think, I mean, this has happened everywhere that I've gone to that I've heard someone that's saying that, um, that company needs them too much. And that's just totally the wrong, uh, mentality or thought process, unless you're working for yourself, then yes, you do need, your company does need you because you're the one working it and manning it, mm -hmm. then yeah, it's just going to fail. But if you're working for somebody forget it we'll just hire someone yeah, i mean businesses are designed companies are designed to have replaceable people you know because if it was designed to be based on just the person there's not going to be a lot of great companies today you know at 
at some certain level, we are all replaceable. But what's not replaceable is how we feel with what we do every day and the life we spend and the impact that we make here while we're still alive. That's not replaceable because only me can be B, only me can be Ken, only me can make you laugh like me. So, and this, and so if something happens, be like, hey, well, there, where's Hustle B? I don't know. He's not reselling anymore. I'll just plug some uh, replacement <laughs> Hustle B in there. <laughs> just get a new a new guy that kind of looks like him, also Filipino, and we'll call him something else like, you know, <laughs> some some kind of other hustle insane, bear hustle <laughs> hustle mosquito or something and just plug them in and see if anybody notices yeah <laughs> young can be the bootleg replacement for b <laughs> <laughs> that'd be hilarious old <laughs> young's a little older so we'll try to get a replacement b that's younger so that we we'll just have some fresh blood we'll just take a cap on young <laughs> <laughs> oh man and uh, let me see what else, anything else about this one. No, but someone else said, I think something kind of funny on here. Um, where was it? <laughs> oh, man. Let me see. Shot down in flames, uh, just like LeBron. When he leaves, just plug in a new guy. <laughs> the funny thing is... <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> the problem is with that situation is that all the other guys around him just didn't do much. Um, so they can and they will plug somebody else in. It just uh, will take time to rebuild. In that mm -hmm. case, that's a totally different situation. Kind of like Kobe. Um, yep. Sure, you can put plug in Lonzo and Kuzma and whoever <laughs> else in there, but... <laughs> Add in LeVar in there. <laughs> yeah, that's totally different. Um, Hustle Bear. B-Stunt Double. So they're trying to find uh, <laughs> some new Hustle Bear. It's pretty funny. Uh, let me see... Yeah, so people seem to like that one. I think that one's totally true, and it just that's one I've just heard a lot of um, when people think they're just they're just too big, um, <laughs> bigger than the actual company. Um, all right, so we got five left. Um, if you like the video, remember thumbs up. We got twenty seven right now. Bump that up a little bit. Remember, like I said too, if you don't like it, you can also give it a thumbs up. Helps all around. Um, number five. And here's the thing with this list. I think a lot of them are kind of repetitive. This one, number five, I don't know how to start over. And that's, I think, is back to, like, even number eight and nine. Like, I think those are very similar as far as, like, not knowing how to do anything else um, or spending too much time in the career. Um, not knowing how to start over um, goes back to where, like, you've been there for a while. Okay, but doesn't matter. You can still quit. Um you just got to figure that out. Um, but I think you sign a contract or something. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's right? True. I mean, that's what I tell everybody. If you really hate your job that much, you can't quit. Nobody's <laughs> yeah. stopping you. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right. There's four left, but I think the four, the last four, I think are really, really good because they are different from the last one. Number five, uh, it's, a little, it's a little repetitive. So number four, uh, the pay is too good to leave. So very dangerous trap to believe in because once you get used to a certain income level your lifestyle expenses also seem to follow mm -hmm. um so in this case yeah if you're making like huge bucks i mean let's say you're making like half a million a year let's say you're making like five hundred thousand, pays too good to leave but then if you're also making that much i mean where i guess what what is your house like if your house is like super right. cheap and you had like a lower end car and like you've seen i forgot some of the nfl rookies um there's only like a handful of them that ever do this mm -hmm. but they stick with like their old car that they've always had right and they're like saving up their money because they know that they can't play forever right injuries happen someone could just like we just talked about the job part you get hurt you mess up your knee something yeah. they're gonna bring in someone else that's been training with the team already plug this guy in and if this guy starts doing well then like you just start to become forgotten after a while yeah, and then you're gonna look for a new team i mean so that's why some of these guys that are smart with the money yeah they're staying with their original car they've always had it's paid off and then they're just saving that money as their career goes and then they're ready to go if something does happen hey 
I got some money at least Ooh, save I mean, you can do something with it. Yeah, look at Derrick Rose, man. You know, he was like one of the best players. Uh, you know, he was Mr. Franchise of Chicago Bulls, you know, like made Chicago Bulls relative again, and then he got hurt, and then it was just downhill from there. And that could that could be easily uh be any of us, right? Not just in the court and what we do. And might as well do something that really makes you happy. You know, uh, the Jim Carrey once said, uh, we're bound to fail anyway. Might as well do something that you love, right? Because yeah. the hardest thing is failing at something that you don't like doing. <laughs> but, you know, but at least if you're failing on something that you're trying to accomplish, at least it's just a lesson learned. But if you tr- if you fail at doing something that you don't even care for, that's the real failure right there. And I think what Will said. So Kawhi Kawhi Leonard was driving the '98 Chevy. Yep. I don't. I think he finally bought a car. I think he did. No, he actually had it uh, uh, refer rehab. Uh, he had it overhauled and back, uh, kind of like fixed it to back its normal shape. <laughs> bring that up too. And he's still uh, as a Chevy Tahoe. I, th- I thought he got rid of it. I mean, I thought he ended up buying a new car finally, but I guess no, not. No, he actually had it, uh, had it uh, kind of like re- basically returned to brand new condition. Oh, so, I mean, of course, he still have the money, but it's, it's not like spending $100,000, you know, supercar or something. <laughs> yeah, that's that pretty cool. True. And yeah. Brian Scalabrini rode the train to, uh, to his game. Oh, yeah, I remember that Boston. too. <laughs> that guy rode the bench for a while too he rode the bench yeah. and the train yeah uh let me see what else and then Kawhi, of course once he goes to the lakers then that's going to be a totally different situation <laughs> but <laughs> uh let me see so yeah pay oh uh, pay too good to leave and i remember my i mean at that time too i was um let me see this was probably how many months before i left maybe like three months out I remember I, it's because I had to wear slacks, button up, tie. I had to wear a tie. <laughs> the word. That tie one makes you look dookie. Yeah. Did you have to what? look clean? Uh they weren't they weren't too picky about that. Mm-hmm. But at the time, so my anti-rebellion part was the mohawk. So what? like I would have to go mohawk? in. Yeah, I have to go in with the tie and all that. And I had the mohawk. And I remember <laughs> one guy was like. So you're like the office misfit or something. <laughs> and I was like, well, I just don't want to be here, but there's nothing I can do about it because I can't leave. Cause in at the time I didn't have my, I was still going through like the process of paying off the loans. Like I was there and I knew it was going to happen. I just knew that it wasn't going to happen now. So I was still patient with it working towards the goal. But at the time I still had the Mohawk and I was just like, man, I just want to get out of here. It was funny. Cause we had to do, meetings with like other i guess um like presidents of certain what is it called like colleges oh. and like science and other ones and like and some people just thought it was i guess weird that was the deal with this guy um especially with a lot of the older people that I had to meet with having a mohawk and stuff like that mm-hmm. now just like man i'm just so tired of it but back to the original story uh, during that time too, my dad was like, "They could pay you eighty grand, ninety grand, a hundred grand, two hundred grand. You're not gonna be happy regardless. Like it doesn't matter how much they're gonna pay you. You can even ask for a raise, do whatever you want. You're clearly not happy there. So it doesn't matter how much they're gonna give you. And I really had to think about that for a while, and I was just like, I mean, that is true because I remember I was like, well, what if I just made a little bit more money? It wouldn't be as bad. But like my dad was like. You're going to be in the same situation. They'll pay you a little bit more, pay you what, 10 grand more, if that, which I knew they wouldn't. But let's say they give you 10 grand more, you're still going to be in the same situation. Now you're just going to be like, oh man, well, maybe I just made a little bit more. And <laughs> it's like, same thing over and over and over again. I mean, when me and my wife was working, you know, life was good. We were able to buy whatever we want. But Man, when we went full time, we took like half the pay cut, you know, like because we were we were still building. And, you know, my situation was different uh, than yours because, you know, 
we had bills right off the bat already and and cutting everything off it was you know it was all of a sudden it wasn't well planned but i think i'm the person that it had to happen that way or else i wouldn't be where i'm at today so there has to be some sacrifice to be taken 100 percent agree on that one and back to the money part so like even um i mean i just milked it with the parents as long as i possibly could i was just like man i'm not trying to impress anybody um i'm just trying to like catch up on these loans and live <laughs> my life like i don't care if i'm living here with the parents like i just gotta do what i can and i had friends too they're just like yeah man i got an apartment i'm over here i'm doing this and blah 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 and then like six months later it's like Oh yeah, I'm, I'm living. I'm living back with my parents now, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> yeah. like, so you paid all this money for nothing. That's the biggest waste of money, you know. Trying to go on your own so fast, so quick, and the next time end up going back to your parents' place. I mean, like, I mean, hundred percent. That's why until I came here to U.S. five years ago, I was living at my parents' house, and I still will live in my parents' house. <laughs> they know that. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll still go back. <laughs> and have my mom cook me some nice fresh meals for real i mean now my parents are here i feel like i'm living at their house <laughs> uh all right let's go back now we got three left uh number three uh there are no jobs out there and if you can't find a job you simply aren't looking hard enough and, and it is true there are a lot of jobs out there but that's really if you do want a job so my example when i was working um <laughs> I also thought to myself, maybe if I just live, uh, maybe if I just, um, you know, work somewhere else, I was still in the university, they paid a little bit more, maybe I just need to go to like a different department, mm -hmm. right? Different department or different, um, whatever uh, college section things they had, because uh, they had different things like colleges and departments and stuff. Like maybe if I just apply and look for another one. So uh, <laughs> every day, I was looking online, like next job, next job, next job. I was like, man, even stuff I wasn't even qualified for. I was like, man, I could learn that. Like, I'll just like, <laughs> well, I'll watch YouTube videos. I'll learn how to do like a bunch of HTML and like all the other stuff. Like I could do that stuff. Like, I just want to get in, I'll make a little bit more money and then I'll just adapt and go from there. And I remember one time I had, <laughs> so they, they kind of implemented like, since I knew graphic design things and creating banners and logos, mm -hmm. uh, this was more for like a web designer website type of stuff. Even a lot of the back end boring stuff that I only knew a little bit of, but not a lot to really know my stuff. I went in an interview and they asked me some like questions. I had no clue what was going on. <laughs> I had to like make up random stuff to make, to make it seem like I knew <laughs> what was happening. And like, yeah, that didn't that didn't go very well. I was kind of embarrassed, but at the same time, like, I was just trying to get out of where I was. <laughs> did, you try, did you try applying for a lot of uh, a lot of jobs or no? Uh, so or you just went to Uber. I went to Uber right off the bat because after I quit, I knew I wanted to own my time, and Uber was the best next th next best thing. I mean, Uber, you're your own boss, you know. I just had to reach a certain X amount of money every month. I mean, I remember it was, I need, I needed $400 every week to make ends meet. Uh, and I did that by driving between 20 to 25 hours, uh, Ubering weekly. So I did that every, every weekend, of course, you know, uh, where everybody's wanting to get grab an Uber and stuff like that. So i did that and i i, I really think if anybody is listening right now if you want to get into full-time reselling get on uber quit your job get on uber go all in on full-time and uber your way through your bills we didn't even have uber for like i don't know how long in my city <laughs> but then when we did get it it was banned because of the taxis oh yeah, yeah. so like i think we just got it back maybe like a little bit over half a year ago mm -hmm. but yeah it was it was gone um <laughs> for a good while but i think if you live in a, a city where you can do it 
Mm-hmm. Um, even yeah. Austin was gone for a while because my brother lives over there. He started doing Uber uh, uh-huh. off and on again, but even then, he couldn't do it for a while since they didn't uh, have it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Will said, did you ever <laughs> Uber anyone to Ross? I wish, but a lot <laughs> of my Uber people, uh, if I, if you know, it was just uh, from their house to their to the bar, <laughs> from the bar to their house, it's either from their house to the airport. So Cincinnati is not that you know, Cincinnati's dookie. It's either it's if you if you Uber during the week, you had to take people to work and from work to their houses. And during the weekend, it was taking people <laughs> to waste their money and to get wasted because they hated their job. <laughs> so Did you get a lot of like drunk people in the car? Um a few times, yeah, but not of the not the rowdy ones, because I knew uh-huh. where to pick the spot you know um like kind of like a lot of them were uh ref- re- more responsible adults one because they had to uber right i guess some of the <laughs> the rowdy ones still drive i really don't have any crazy uber story but one thing that i realized is i actually ask a lot of people uh, what they did and if they love what they're doing and mm-hmm. about like 90 percent people people didn't like what they were doing they loved it i mean they didn't love it you know they didn't love it to a point that because you can just you know like ask me about reselling about cars about shoes i i have you know i'll I'll talk to you for days but ask ask me about something that i'm not interested in about selling uh finds uh garage sales i don't even want to talk to you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know because that's you have to i mean for for me for you to be interesting <laughs> you have to do talk about something you love and zach said that uh he tried uber and lyft and it was terrible so he probably had like the buffest driver in the world yeah. <laughs> <Nobody> <laughs> at, least can intim- at least you can intimidate people uh you're kind of buff in there i thought you were gonna give us stories about people drunk and throwing up in your car and stuff like that no um Oh, well, well, if they do that, they have a hefty fine. They have a hefty fine on uh, for your car. It's about two hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, because okay, like uh, you have to get your car detailed and everything like that. So, uh, you know, so I, I don't think they want to do that <laughs> first because they'd end up broke or homeless. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to tell them the story about what happened with Young? So Young got picked up at one of the airports, right, by his Uber or Lyft driver, and all of a sudden. <laughs> He like calls me randomly and he's like, Hey, this driver, he's like interested in reselling. Talk to him. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then like, he just like throws the phone and the guy's like, hello. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> like kind of confused. And then, um, I was telling him about like my channel and stuff. He's like, Oh yeah, it's good. It's good. And then, and then, uh, Young's like, Hey, well, what is, what's Hustlebee's number? We're like, how can I get a hold of her or, or something? Because, um, He's Filipino. Yeah, he's Filipino. He's like, so let him know. And then what did he do? Did he try calling you too? Or what did he, tried he do? He tried calling me. I didn't answer. I didn't know who he was. Next thing I know, he would, he called me on my uh, my messenger. Like, yeah, hey, young, what's up? Hey, man, I got this Filipino Uber Leaf driver. What's the now reselling? Just put me on the phone. <laughs> Just said, like, hey, resell. Follow Hustler Hacks and also be on Instagram. And he said, hey, man, this guy's going to hook me up some Filipino food if you help him. <laughs> what young said <laughs> and then the guy dm me and never again that's just one dm that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one was like a random uh, young's always doing random stuff uh chris yes we are planning a trip to san diego but we don't know the dates yet but i think atlanta is coming up before then okay. but for sure las vegas because that one's next month yep all right we got two left um number two which actually I felt for this one a lot. I went to college for this. So just because you got your degree in English literature doesn't mean you should suffer through a boring, meaningless career. There are no reason that you can't go out and become a project manager, freelance photographer, other stuff that's your true passion. The fact is that more than 70% of people in the workforce don't work in a field related to their college degree. That's a pretty good stack. It's also kind of sad at some point because I know people too that 
I graduated with that had the graphic design background. Mm -hmm. They did love it. Um, they did good. All that stuff. As far as like in our courses and classes, graduated. They couldn't find jobs. And then they just kind of like did a little bit of freelance here and there. Next thing you know, I saw them working at certain places. I know one guy was working at Peter Piper. He ended up just being Peter Piper, P Peter Piper pizza ended up just being like a manager. Another guy worked at target for a good while. I don't know where he went after that. Um, and I know there was somebody else that I did talk to quite a bit, but quite a bit of them. Like I really didn't even know a lot of them that really stayed with like what they graduated in. They just were trying to find somewhere else to work and then ended up just doing that. And that was it. Like, I don't know what their student loan situation, if it was like mine or not, if they really enjoyed what they were doing, they were just looking for money, looking for a job. In my case, I did do what I graduated in, but later on in life, it ended up working because of merch by Amazon. Mm -hmm. So my background in that ended up working for me later on, but 70% of the workforce don't work in the field related to their college degree. That's kind of sad though, because we spend so much money in the college stuff mm -hmm. to not even do it. And I felt like that for a long time. Like I was like, man, I went to school for this. Like, yeah, I could just go quit and work somewhere else. Like I could just go work wherever at some store or something. But the fact that I graduated in it, it's like, oh man, it's like stabbing me. Yeah, at first I really wanted to become a pilot, and I look at all the <laughs> all the stuff that I need to do to become one. Said nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it worked out for me because, um, you know, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration, major in entrepreneurship. So pretty much, I you know did all the startup stuff, how to start a company and stuff like that. But never in my mind it crossed. Uh, you know, online or e-commerce business, but you know, it was all about brick and mortar for me. Uh, but uh, I did college. I mean, you know, it was it was sad and not sad because my my mom uh, my mom came from a very educated family. A lot of them have you know titles in their name, and um, but but one thing that really kind of like uh uh push me to finish college because my mom told me if there's one thing that I can give you uh it is the gift of education because it's something that nobody can steal away steal from you and it, it hit me because I'm like because I was the guy that kind of like knew everything you know you're young uh, I was 16 years old flipping you know I was flipping flipping fruits on the side of the road made more money than a regular you know labor job or whatever and then flipping cars and everything like that. So I kind of felt like I knew everything. But, uh, you know, later in life, I was really uh, I was really thinking that, man, you know, like my mom's right and everything like that. And then that's when I took everything seriously. And, of course, you know, I was just that ungrateful kid. Man, my, <laughs> I mean, you know, talking, hearing about your student loans, man, I am, I'm so blessed that I didn't have any student loans, you know, like because my parents paid for it. And, and here I am, you know took me seven years to finish college because uh my parents paid for it you know I kind of took it for granted because you know nothing really was taken away from me it was just literally a gift from my parents that I didn't saw as a gift I thought I thought I saw it as a curse because man you know listening to all these professors da, 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 da. but you know um it was it was kind of a discipline a training for me to go there and now thinking about it man I know how to do accounting i know how to you know interpret numbers and stuff like that because of the education that my parents gifted me with so um so you know it's funny you know like you talk about you you ended up doing amazon merch by amazon and stuff like that i said uh you know there are things in your life that we don't understand right off as of the moment but by little we know uh we'll be able to use it some way or somehow yes sir you never know what's gonna happen later on in life and and I felt because so my wife doesn't have a degree. Um, she tried going to college for maybe like a year or so, ended up getting out of it. Um, she has worked at Starbucks for a lot of her life um, and somewhat moved up and things like that. But now she works with the family business. But for the longest time, I guess also being in that college thing and having a degree, I kind of felt like, man, like, what is she going to do? Is she 
uh, you know, people would ask me like, is she going to go back to school? Is she going to get her degree? What does she plan on doing? Blah, blah, blah. And in my mind too, I started to think about that more and more like, you know, what is she going to do? What does she want to do? Things like that. And we would talk about it. And, and inside, instead of me kind of pushing her to do things, it's because I was the one that was unhappy at the time. So instead of me trying to push things like, hey, well, you should go do this, or you should do that, or you should try to work here. That was just because of my and how I was feeling. And that completely changed once I wanted to do what I wanted to do and started making money, things started to kind of fall into place more and more. And what I noticed is that even the friends that I had, that husband and wife both have a degree, now they're both working a lot. They try to also balance kids in there. And because they both have degrees now they're trying to make a certain amount of money and then they bring in kids into the situation it's like now we're going to pay for daycare how much does daycare cost are we going to take who is one of them going to stay home and take care of the kid or how are you going to balance that now that turns into like a totally situ different situation that college try to prepare you for all this stuff to get a full-time job that now when a family comes into play you have to make bigger decisions and changes on what you're going to do there. So you never know what's going to happen later on, at least in life when kids and married and things like that happen. Truth. <laughs> you're like, you know what? I don't want to talk about kids right now. I don't no, want to yeah. bring any of that stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> Get that out of my house. Well, I got um, maybe uh, pretty soon my, 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 my mom and dad is going to be, uh, pretty excited about kids, though. I can just leave it with them. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep them riled up. We just never know what's going to happen. My, my dad keeps on asking, too. Like, man, when are your grandkids? Uh, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, settle down. Real. Get going. You got your house. You got the business going. Make it happen. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you have to All do right. it first. I'm not going to have kids before you. Or we might have to do it the same. So they'll grow up buddies. Buddies. <laughs> and then you have, like, a next generation of... Yeah. Like Hustler Hacks Jr. and Hustle B Jr. Yeah. We'll put them on a show when they're like uh when they're old enough to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, go All, right. <laughs> All right, finally, number one, which we're almost what it's almost six. Uh number one. I will only stay for another year. So <laughs> we've all said this at some point, and many times that year turns into two years three years, five years, maybe 10 years. Uh, if you know it's not the right career, make that change now. True. I mean, if it's not something you're excited about, if it's not something you can see yourself doing for the next 10 years, quit it because you're wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself. If I get into something and if I start learning on something, and if I look at my, I mean, I ask myself, is this something that I want to do for the next five or 10 years? And if it's not, I don't want to do it, you know? So I'm just very passionate about, um, you know, creating, a, a, actually, you know, creating a business that you can actually kind of like not be tied into, you know? Um, the reason why I don't ship 100 items a day, I'd rather ship 10 items a day um so um that's a bit pretty big part of it because at the end of the day um how am i gonna spend money if i don't have enough time yeah and i really feel like i feel kind of an ass for using this example but so <laughs> when i worked at <laughs> so when i worked at toys r us in college um i had a manager too and he wasn't even super old or anything he was still probably like early 30s or something i mean he He'd been the manager for maybe four years, even before I got there. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think my last year before I left, he was like, he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to stay one more year and I'm done. Like, forget <laughs> yes. about this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this manager stuff forever. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, that's totally up to you. Um, and then when I quit, like I just went to go do, you know, the graphic design thing and I worked that full-time job. He was still there when I, when I quit now, years later, when I was shopping at Toys R Us and buying stuff to resell for FBA, uh -huh. he was there. And this was like two or three years later. Now uh -huh. another two years go by 
and he's still there. So now Toys R Us is, yes, closing down. And the one that we do have, he's still there. So, but at this point, now he has to make a decision as far as where he wants to go to next, because now you're at a point to where you have to leave. Right, there right. is no other choice because it's going to shut down. And I think it's maybe about a week or two left because I think they were already on like the uh, 70% off or something. There's not a lot left um, in the store um, the last time I went. So um, now when you're in this situation where you're forced to go do something else, that's that's tougher because you're not – I mean, you're never going to be prepared for anything, mm-hmm. but at least – Reselling, working for yourself, you do have more control somewhat. As long as you're saving money, you're building it up, you're using the capital correctly, and you are technically your own boss. Um, of course, Amazon, eBay have their own rules you must follow. But when you're working for someone like that, at least the corporation that you put a lot of time and effort and years in, let's say something like Toys R Us and then they close down, um, that's that's a tough situation, I think, to be in. Let me see. So... Let me go. Uh, we'll do all 10 real quick, and then we'll take any last comments, questions before we go. So 10, I don't know how to do anything else. Nine, I put too much time into my career. Number eight, I'm too old to start a new career. Number seven, I'm not too unhappy. Number six, my company needs me too much. Mm-hmm. Number five, I don't know how to start over. Number four, the pay is too good to leave. Number three, there are no jobs out there. Number two, I went to college for this. And number one, I will only stay for another year. So there's all 10 broken down. Any questions, comments, throw it in the chat, even if it's reseller type. I can tell you this right now. What a time to be alive. Ross, fire right now. Fire if you're out there going and sourcing. And then merch by Amazon. (laughs) Pop sockets just got released. So... If you want to start designing pop sockets, there at least I think most accounts are starting to get them already. Now is the time. Get on there, start designing those, and uh, get as many as you can. So right now, pretty good uh, opportunities if you're on both of those sides. True, true, true. Anything else you want to throw in there? I hate you because I don't have Ross. <laughs> 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 and they got to drive far? Gonna drive two hours to hit a Ross. <laughs> but I will. I'm not gonna make excuses. We just talk about it. That's a lie that I'm telling myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just gotta go out there and drive. Yeah. I Far actually away. went to Ross. I'm not gonna tell anybody where. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Uh Indy Picker, were you guys born knowing everything about sneakers? Uh is no. it in your DNA? How the heck do you know so much? Because, well, you know why? Because I grew up not having sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, I didn't have them, you know. Um, my parents used it as a reward. So I guess um, I had to know which was the best sneakers because I only got, you know, maybe two or three sneakers a year. That was later, though. That was later. But growing up, it was always kind of like, you know, not the sneakers that everybody had. Um, but you know, no, what in all seriousness, it's just learning. You know, I didn't know I didn't know the sport football. You know, I don't I didn't grow up with the sport football. I didn't grow up with the sport soccer. I didn't grow up with any track cleats or anything like that. But um good thing we have this. Uh, we have Google on our phones and you can learn everything there. And of course, the Hustler Hacks YouTube channel. And Indy Picker, um, I was in the womb. I was clutching to certain shoes, and I was just like <laughs> waiting to come out. And I was just like, "Oh man, I just gotta oh, wait you here." Oh, had a sneaker encyclopedia. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but as far as the sneaker stuff, uh, learning is just because I was just a huge NBA fan, and then kind of growing up with that, and then over time. Kind of learn more and more, but yeah, I think the a, perfect this guy example. Had the OG Space Jam. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we shouldn't talk about that. Yeah, uh, I but I think a perfect example would be Snoopy, <laughs> Jeff, who knew nothing about as far as like athletic shoes, 
True. Um, so if you want to watch that one, I think that's a good one because he didn't know anything about any of that stuff and really did all the research on the back end. Uh, Ryan was the best place to buy Nike gift cards. Um, someone said to try the Raise app. There's some different ones out there, but they don't give you a lot of like, they're not going to give you a huge discount when it comes to oh, the gift cards. They're pretty shysty when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't even buy Nike gift cards, to be honest. Uh, let me see. Man, where are we? Um, Cisco, appreciate it. Love the show. Uh, Jim, do you guys get LeBrons at Ross? Maybe no. Ross Find of the Week sometime. <laughs> oh, this guy. Uh, yeah. Let me see. <laughs> Wednesdays are awesome. Thanks, guys, for doing these. Appreciate it. Ash Woe. Uh, Caroline, can we talk about storage? I'm running out of room. I'm experiencing hard growing pains. So, you want to talk about storage since you're how many? How much? How many rooms do you have, and how much uh, square footage do you have? So I have, I have about, um, uh, like living space. I have about nine hundred square feet. So I have two rooms, nine hundred square feet of uh, living space. Uh, you know that's minus bathroom. You know, minus bathroom and balcony and everything like that. But two rooms, uh, nine hundred square feet. And let me pull out my listings right now. I have 1,162 items in my apartment. So I guess just have to make it work. I have boxes. I have 20 st stacks of uh, uh, 20 pairs of shoes in one stack. So um, I have probably close to 800 pairs of shoes in my apartment. Do they go all the way up to the, to like the ceiling or no? Uh, not not quite because they get really you know um yeah they get really shaky so i i'd say if i wanted to get it up there i need to have shelves made you know uh to make it higher but i'm not up to that point yet oh okay mm -hmm. it's just trying to work with i guess as much as you can but trying to like eliminate a lot of the room so like what you, we've talked about before is like the pre-packaging and mm -hmm. i started to do of course a lot of that too and the pre-packaging helps a lot time and space so you didn't pre package at all right yeah I, I never used to even do the pre-packaging until um you know me and ken lister sister started talking more and more and i was like yeah i need to pre-package a lot of them and have them already stacked in the usps shoebox because all of them are the same size mm -hmm. i can stack them up to a certain level and it'll save me a lot of room so that helped a lot doing that and just spending the time to do that even before um you know, have to ship them out it'll help you um, not even have to go through that process again once it sells. It's already done. So it's been helping. Uh, let me see. Where are we? Shutdown Flames is B. Uh, oh, yeah. He sent me an email. Lives in Indy. Wants to see if uh, you want free lunch. He is buying if B goes around there. Let's do that. Uh, maybe when uh, Glenn uh, comes to uh, Cincinnati or when we meet uh, – when we're uh, when we're heading to Chicago, so, uh, well, you know, right. like, yeah, just for anybody out there, I mean, it's not like I don't want to meet everybody else, but I do. But when I source, I just I just fly like a bee. So <laughs> I'm sorry if I, you know, like if I'm in a city, I don't get to stop by and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, that's why we wanted to do a lot of the, you know, workshops all over the U.S. So at least that's just a time for us to sit down. But, uh, you know, typical day, the bee's just buzzing and flying under the radar. <laughs> He's in bee mode. Mm -hmm. um, Caroline, as far as, like, uh, which shoes sell, I mean, so, I mean, what helps with that is that, like, I mean, label the box. You can also put a, I guess, if you're cross-listing to other platforms, you could put that on there, too, if you're doing Amazon or Mercari or wherever else they're selling. But um, having that already pre-packaged, they're labeled, you know what shoe it is. You can even keep like basketball in one little section or soccer or football cleats and kind of keep them all there. And, you know, um, and then, of course, um, printing out your we talked about this, too, right? Like printing out your listings, yeah. making sure that you have everything correct. And you can do how often do you do that again? Uh, every two weeks. Uh, so mostly uh, my wife does it. I uh, just help her, you know, count. Uh, she prints out all the listings and double checks everything. Uh, cause you know, uh, our technology is not perfect. Uh, there might be some human errors or some relisting errors and stuff like that. So we make sure everything's uh, correct. And then we just, uh, we cross list and phosphorus as well. So we have to make sure that 
if something's sold on Poshmark, you have to take it off eBay and vice versa. So, um, you know, it's a process that I think it's not a hard process. You just have to get used to it. So that's why there's no one correct way of doing it. Uh, you just have to create one, uh, one that's easy enough for you to understand and one that's efficient enough for you. Uh, Will asks, is there going to be a workshop in Vegas or just a meetup? So in Vegas, it's just going to be a meetup because eBay is going to do – eBay opens going to be like, what, three full days of, like, workshop and other stuff. Mm -hmm. I know, if I know me very well, I'm going to get very tired of sitting there in workshops, especially when there's, I don't know, casinos around me, buddies, <laughs> hanging out. I definitely want to go and hang out with everybody, especially for like the last day we're going to do the meetup. But I know probably like third day eBay open and apparently it's starting at like seven or eight. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, if I'm going to get there or we're going to get there on time because I mean, that's just super early and we're in Vegas. Like no one wants to get up that early to go to a workshop. So we're going to keep it um, just a meetup hangout type of thing uh, where we can all um, chill. Yeah. So, so. Uh, yeah, we haven't uh, put out the uh, final, uh, uh, the final uh, location yet, but it will be uh lunchtime uh friday of that ebay open weekend so uh just so you guys know um but again um we're well, me and glenn have been talking or uh, uh uh we've talked about uh about doing more workshops all over uh, the u.s so next year is going to be a little bit smoother we'll be able to plan out better uh this year has just been tri testing and trial for us and uh so far we've loved the uh, uh, workshop uh set up and hang out after so uh and that way we could really you know get into a more intimate setting that we can exchange knowledge with each other yes sir and Ashwell, did you sell your refrigerator oreos i didn't i actually bought another pair and then now they're both listed but i haven't sold any of them yet um workshop at the craps table <laughs> uh anything else i think that's pretty much it so we went a little bit over but uh, good show and uh, we'll try to mix these in once in a while so we get like some of these like top tens and then of course we'll still do um you know smasher pass and mm -hmm. you know the end of the month review thing which i think that's that might be the next one or maybe there's one after that um mm -hmm. yeah next month will be the end of the month review on the store reviews of uh, ross and marshalls and all that stuff so that's crazy man Days are flying so fast. Oh, man, yeah. June's already going to be over and done with. Yeah, days are going by super quick. Yep. Um, anything else? I think that's it. Just continue sourcing because right now I think stores are really, really doing good as far as, like, the things they're getting and inventory. So keep going out there. And, again, Merch by Amazon side, too. Good opportunity now with that as well. So uh, keep doing what you're doing. B, anything else? That's pretty much it. Um, ne uh, this next week, I'm just gonna be hanging out with the family. Uh, be chilling in Florida, so I'll be hanging out with our boy Carlos there. Um, but yeah, um, just hustle. You just have to hustle. Uh, if you really wanna, you know, make it big, you have to put in the work, even in dry season. Because there's some stores out there that are not too dry. <laughs> Yes, sir. And shout out in flames. We'll let you know when we're over there. Uh, free meals. We love meals. And uh, Will, appreciate it. District Deals, Caroline, and everybody else. Ashwell is also here. Appreciate it. And yes, be dookie free and go out and get it.